Welcome to Road to the College Football Playoff, presented by Allstate. Hi, everybody. I'm Joe Tessitore with you here as we go in-depth with Alabama on this Road to the College Football Playoff. The pressure of being number one throughout the season is nothing new to Bama. What was new this year was the fact that the season ended in a different way for them. It was no longer lonely at the top of the SEC. There were two other national title contenders. One of them thumped Bama. So now Bama wasn't rolling through the SEC championship. Instead, their body of work would have to stand up as they went through the great debate of who's in. Tide motivated all offseason because they were close to a fifth national championship under Nick Saban. The day after that game, Perk said he began preparing for this night and this season. It's the toughest opener that Nick Saban has had since he's been at Alabama. Hurts takes a downfield shot. Ridley is running free. He's got a touchdown. And they hold it all night for him. Harris first three and scores. So the Tide roll on, and they hope this will be the first of three visits to Atlanta. Last year we didn't finish, and going into every game this year, we know that's one thing that we have to do. Bam on three. One, two, three, bam. Damian, big hole, left side, touchdown. The Tide defense rises up. Minka as a playmaker, he's the next great one. It's Jalen Hurts' show. The rest of this football team believes in number two. They're going to make it seven in a row. And Alabama moving to 8-0. Alabama goes to 9-0. It's all the team. We've got some room to improve, obviously. It's a process. This is a tough place to play, especially at night. Harris Williams into the end zone. State. The dogs came to play. Harris straight ahead. And Peter. Alabama just tied the game at 24. Now I told him I was driving the bus. And the bus is pulling off. And they was going to get on and get off. And they got on and we, and we got it done tonight. The game is over. Alabama survives. All eyes on the Iron Bowl. Both teams still alive for the national championship. And that's what makes this so epic. He scores. Touchdown. The Auburn Tigers have defeated number one. There is no way you pick Alabama to be in the playoff. I don't think they should get in either. I think this team deserves the opportunity to get in the playoff. I'd certainly like to see this team get the opportunity to do it. That conversation is in the rearview mirror. We will not be discussing that today. Alabama is the only team to reach the college football playoff in all four seasons of the new format. They're going to face Clemson, of course, for the third straight season, the rubber match of the last two national title games. And Nick Saban has lost the last three Sugar Bowl appearances, of classic in the 2014 playoff against Ohio State. What is your read on this year's Alabama team? Well, they've been consistent. Um, my read is I don't think they're as dominant, near as dominant as they've been in the past. I don't think they're as talented as they've been in the past. You turn on the tape, and I don't think you're as blown away at guys at every position and guys that rush the passer. And I think there's more deficiencies and more holes than we've seen. But here's the thing. In, in, a, in, a, day, in a day where in college football where there's a lot of the same mm -hmm. and there's not, a, there's not great teams that are complete teams, they still don't beat themselves. They don't. They're consistent. They don't, they don't get a lot of penalties. Now, they did against Auburn. They don't turn the football over a lot. They don't give up big plays in the passing game. They make you earn it, and that's, that's what you'll see from them, and that's why, that's why ultimately they're in the playoff right now is because they've been that consistent model. It's a turn-back-the-clock team. Last year, Lane Kiffin, that's all we talked about, the innovative offense, Lane Kiffin, Lane Kiffin. We talk more about the play calling than the style of play. Lane Kiffin is gone. Brian Dayball comes in. It's a physical team. They lead the SEC in rushing, and that's not by mistake. Nick Saban has always wanted to dominate the line of scrimmage, play tough physical defense. They've turned back the clock. Lane Kiffin's no longer there, and now the style of play seems to me to more suit Nick Saban, suits this Alabama team. They're a physical football team, Joe. You know, you mentioned something. Many points, though. I mean, <laughs> that's okay. It might suit them it's, more, it's, but... It's a physical team, maybe not as explosive, but they're still in the college football playoff doing it this way. You know, you mentioned something about the way they go about their business. They never have that ugly loss. Mm. I mean, at Auburn, I get. Listen, Auburn was playing as well as anybody was playing in the country. You're at Auburn, it's a rivalry game. 
but they never have that clunker that other national title contending teams have. But for them, they had some ugly wins, which is unconventional. Right. Mississippi we State. Should, we have to start criticizing wins. Well, right. <laughs> okay, but okay. Well, let's let's compare you to the standard that you've been. You Understood. Usually, you usually hit people upside the head with the frying yep. pan early and often, and the game's over. A lot and, of superstars that weren't in that front seven. Oh, no. mm. I mean, they're, but they're, they're not as deep. They don't rush the passer consistently. They don't have a consistent pass rush. Um, so again, and to me, in the end. Jalen Hurts hasn't taken the necessary steps to evolve, to get better, to put this team over the top. All right, well, it's, how is he better from a year ago? How is he a different quarterback as he heads into this college football playoff compared to the guy we saw last year? Because that game in Atlanta against Washington, I mean, there were some cringe moments offensively there. How's, how are they better offensively right well, now? Well, I think he's more comfortable. Last year, we were trying to figure out a way, how can Jalen Hurts mesh with Lane Kiffin, become a more dynamic passer? We're used to seeing Lane hold up the touchdown sign anytime he calls a play that he thinks should be a long touchdown pass. This year, we're not concerned about that. All we're concerned with is moving the football. Yeah. He's more comfortable running the football. And, and I think because of that, you're seeing a better Jalen Hurts, a more confident Jalen Hurts. He's checking some at the line of scrimmage. We didn't see him check a lot at the you line of scrimmage. You think he's better this year than he was a year ago? I think he's a better football player. Maybe not a better passer, yeah. but I think he's a better football player this year. I don't. I, I do. I, 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 I don't know what it is, but it doesn't feel, and it might be Lane Kiffin, but it just doesn't feel as good as it has in the past, and it seems it's harder. Everything's harder for mm -hmm. him than it was last year. And listen, they lost some weapons. Yeah. I mean, losing Howard from a year ago was significant. Significant. I mean, another playmaker. They only got one. It stopped yeah. Ridley. Ridley's the guy outside. I'll right. double team him all day long mm -hmm. and make somebody else beat me. Left tackle. Jalen Hurts has to do a better job passing the football. He has to do a better job negotiating the pocket. He's got to do a better job keeping his eyes down the field playing quarterback. He is quick to run out of the pocket. And those are the things that as he continues to do, I, he's got how many weeks of ball practice? Three or four weeks? He's got 15 practices. Okay, 15 practices. I, I wouldn't let him run a single time. I would make him throw every single time. He's mastered that. You're now, looking for I, I would make him right. throw the – but here, but here is one thing to look forward to, though. One thing to look forward to is you only got two games left, and if you lose, you're out. You can run him every time if you want to. Yeah. You can run him as many as – if he needs 20 carries to win, he's going to run the football – you'll see a lot of design runs from him because I think it's the best way for their offense to move the football. You know, I think you make a good point about the offense. You think I make a good point I, or I, I did make a no, good I point? Think you, I think you make a good point. Maybe it's a great point. <laughs> What has Alabama been known for, guys? Defense. Of course. The reason this team feels different is because the defense is different. When's the last time we've seen three consecutive SEC opponents rush for over 100 yards against Alabama? Um. LSU, Mississippi State, and Auburn all over 100 yards. This team has been tried and true, not this year, over like the last decade, you can't run the football against well, them. Let's show so you some of the numbers different. there, Book. Yes. Right? Last two seasons under Jeremy Pruitt, who mm -hmm. of course is moving on to take the head coaching job at Tennessee, but will coach through the playoff. Because Alabama defensively last two seasons under Pruitt have allowed just 12 points per game in that span, held opponents to just four yards per game. Now Pruitt, uh, they've been down this path before of the guy who's gonna do both jobs and be the coordinator. Um, we know there was a distraction. That was the offensive coordinator <laughs> who has been panned for not being the most mature guy in the world in Lane Kiffin a year ago. When it's the defensive coordinator, it's a little easier to swallow considering how Coach Saban goes about his business with the defense. It, it all the, th these coaches in waiting things, or what, what do you call this? It's the coaching in waiting a thing situation? Not, not you quite. Call this? It's, it's a a layover that's leaving. A layover <laughs> okay, Whatever you want to call yeah. this. It all rests on the individual. How mature is the individual? We've seen guys like Kirby Smart handle it. You've seen Jim McElroy yes. handle it just fine. Lane Kiffin couldn't handle it, and he didn't do a good job doing what he needed to do. Can Jeremy Pruitt do, take the necessary steps and still be the guy for Alabama? This is a huge, huge question mark. It's juggling two different jobs at the same time. It's not for everybody. You better have had a plan. He, he, he better have had a plan laid out for this all year long in the thought that it might happen. The, the guys I'm going to hire, the, the, uh, the, the, the way I'm going to introduce myself, the, way I'm, the style that I'm going to uh, uh, tell recruits, mm -hmm. the way I'm going to recruit, all these questions have to be answered. So it is a legit concern, but you still got Nick over here. Does it impact what we see on the field? I don't think so, because I think when Jeremy Pruitt is wearing the Alabama hat, he's going to be all in. When it's time for him to recruit Tennessee, he'll go and he'll do that. And I think also they've been there and done that meeting Alabama. Jim McElwain, okay, Kirby Smart. And the one thing that Nick Saban did, I remember talking to somebody down there, Nick realized it's a lot of pressure on those guys. And so he hired the guy an assistant, yep. okay? 
This guy's gonna help you, Jim McElwain. This guy's gonna help you, Kirby Smart. I have no doubt he's gonna do the same thing with Jeremy Pruitt. Somebody to help you, because it's a lot to do, yep. but I have no doubt. And especially because who's really the de facto defensive coordinator anyway? Who, who's the guy that's calling the show anyway? I think that perks helps when Nick Saban is on the sideline also. How good is this defense when you really consider where they are? I know where they were with 22 and 56 mm -hmm. coming off the edge and 93 lined up, but when we size them up against the rest of college football, where do you put them? Uh, it's still above the line. If the line is average, they're still an above average defense. They're not dominant the way they were. They, they can't do some of the same things. Years past, they could line up with Allen and Anderson and rush the passer with four guys. They can't do that. In order to create pressure now, they're going to have to blitz you, which makes them vulnerable on the back end. Nick Saban doesn't like to be vulnerable. He doesn't like to give up big plays. So they're still a very good defense. They're just not dominant. What about being healthier by the time the playoff comes around? Well, uh, Lewis, Wilson, uh, I mean, being able to get those guys. 29 still Miller. back there. He's pretty good. Mink is awesome. <laughs> yeah. but, and more importantly for those guys, they got that four weeks to, to get in shape. Mm. Because they were trying to get back for Auburn, but you can't get back and simulate contact and locking out and pushing somebody and then running to the football and all that stuff. It's just, it's really hard to do. So that'll make a huge difference. They got to find that ability that they had in Florida State to rush the pass a little bit. They do have to blitz more. They're not, as, they're not deep in the front seven. They're not as deep as they were a year ago. And hey, guess who wore them out? Clemson warm out down the stretch. Yeah, we're going to get much more into that so, matchup. That so that's Bama definitely defense. going to be something that's going to be you, you need to watch out for. Against the Clemson offense. Plus, four, four, Jalen Hurts. David is going to take us do. to the film. Explain Jalen Hurts when he's at his best. Much more to come. Road to the College Football Playoff is presented by Allstate, official protector of college football fans. You're watching Road to the College Football Playoff, presented by Allstate. Well, Coach Saban is coaching countless big games at Bama, but as we mentioned, the Allstate Sugar Bowl hasn't been a friend to the Tide. Bama 0-3 in the Sugar Bowl under Saban. That includes the 2014 College Football Playoff game against Ohio State. Of course, that'll bring about plenty of questions during the week of the game. Tom Rinaldi explains Saban's complicated relationship with the media. Where we are sitting. Where are the we? The press room. The press room. Okay. I've had good and bad experiences here. Is that what kind of program you want the University of Alabama to have to represent the people in this state? And it really doesn't matter what you say. So you can ask the bottle. I, I could give a about all that. Excuse my French, but don't ask me. You answer that question. And they run through our ass like through a tin horn, man, and we could not stop them. Well, it's just a phrase that when I was a player, you know, the defensive coordinator used to use all the time when they were running the ball on us. So it kind of stuck, you know? And uh, I really don't even know what it means. <laughs> Coach, a question about your relationship with the media. Just know that what you think doesn't count. I can tell by the nature of this Tom press conference that you all think I'm absolutely crazy. And I know people sort of try to make me to be a bit of a till of the hunt. I mean, you want me to do a Belichick on you? Are there any dumb questions? Never answer a what if. So do I need to do a media thing with you guys not to ask what ifs? Coach, just a, a quick follow-up on that. Better make it a good one now, because I'm about half fired up here. I have a tremendous amount of respect for those in the media. Where I have a difficult time is sometimes they think they're entitled to things that I don't think they're entitled to. Why would you ask me? I mean, I read stuff all the time like, oh, well, that's, that's nice to know. Where'd you come up with that? Just, you know, had a dream about it or what? How would you characterize your, your attitude, generally speaking, when you walk through that door? I always have a message, and I want to get the message to our fans, and I want to get our message to the players. I don't even know what you asked me, but I just wanted to say that. <laughs> Regardless of what you're asked? Regardless. It's called bridging questions. Give us a lesson. I'm about ready to bridge some of yours. 
Coach, you guys have been dominant. How pleased are you with how you guys are performing? You know, all that stuff you write about how good we are and all that stuff they hear on ESPN, it's like poison. It's like taking poison, like rat poison. What do you think Coach Saban is thinking about when he stands behind that lectern and the lights are up and he looks out at this, this group of people? <laughs> um, I guess he thinks you all are rat poison. Sometimes things come out that I wish didn't. Poison would have been good enough. I didn't need to take the extra step. I admit that. His biggest thing is he doesn't want us getting influenced by the media. And I don't necessarily think it's about what you guys do. I think it's more about us. Because if it was up to you, we're, we're, we're six foot under already. We're dead and buried and gone. Gone. Coach, why? Even though it may not seem like um, I have a respect for the media and some of the, and all the folks that cover us, I do. But my patience level is not always what it should be. So I'm gonna leave it at that. And, you know, thanks for asking. And coach, thanks for telling. You my have any patience level might not be the same. You have any rat poison to deliver here? What do you what do you deliver? Any rat yeah, poison? No, yeah, yeah, I'll give him some rat poison. Okay, well, I'm, gonna have some rat poison. I'm gonna compliment Jalen Hurts and talk about, first of all, what he does best. What he does best is run the football. He's a tailback. This dude is a tailback. He's one of the better no runners doubt. in college football. Watch him run the midline right here. Look, he's reading the defensive tackle. Don't block great players all the time like Christian Wilkins. Read them. Make them make a decision and watch him finish the run with power. Not finesse, finishes with power. When you need a yard, he can do that. This is where he's improved in spurts. Watch it. Usually in the past, he'd come out of the pocket right here and he'd take off. He'd take off the green grass right here. Great scramble drill with Ridley. He takes off down the field. His eyes are up the whole entire time. Obviously makes the big play down the field. Now here's, here's where we need more of. You need more of this if you're an Alabama fan. Anticipate where you're throwing the football. You know what route your guy's running. Throw the ball open. Throw him open. Throw. Throw. Throw it. Have confidence. You know the route. You've been there long enough. You've got enough starts now. You have a good relationship with your receivers. You've got to trust them. You've got to make plays down the field. You know what's a little bit different is a year ago right now when we were talking about Jalen Hurts getting ready for the college football playoff, one of the great criticisms was throwing the ball only at the line of scrimmage or behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah. He does have more of a willingness to go downfield with the ball now. Yes, to Calvin Ridley. That's right. the guy he's looking at. He's pretty good. At. Yeah, that, that boy real good. He's, I mean, he's, he's a top pick, obviously, at the wide receiver's position. He's got to find guys outside of that, but he's got to do that. He's got to keep his eyes down the field because when he brings his eyes down and you're a defense and you know when you bring your eyes down and you're running, you can leave coverage. You can evacuate. You don't have to worry about covering guys down the field. It's when you have to worry about covering those guys deep, and then he takes off when it makes it really dangerous. And we'll talk about the role that that can play in the matchup with Clemson. How this game can be won by Bama. The guys will give us those answers when we return on the road to the college football playoff for the tie. You can be the greatest. You can be the greatest. Set the world on fire. A little fire. Road to the college football playoff is presented by Allstate, official protector of college football fans. Guys, you ready for the third time for Bama and Clemson? And Let's get will it. it look like what we saw at the end of the 2015 season? Went out there in Arizona. Hey, you number two, right Bama beat number one, Clemson, 45 to 40. He's not around anymore. Kenyon Drank, he's off in the NFL. Howard's not around anymore. He's off to the NFL. It's a new look for Alabama and a new look for Clemson to a great degree. Um, let's focus in on the running backs for Alabama. I don't think Damian Harris gets enough credit. He, do, he doesn't get enough love. Um, I think he's Michael Turner. Mm. You know, he's he's Good built, one. Good he's one. built low to the ground, thick lower body, got enough speed to make you miss, but makes you make a business decision when he gets to that second level. I mean, that dude's coming fast. He runs physical, runs hard, can run around you, can run by you. And listen, he's going to have to be a beast. And Bo Scarborough, we saw what he did last year in the national championship race, in the run, the first game against Washington, and then before he got hurt against Clemson, you could argue if he didn't get hurt that we might be having a different conversation about this trilogy. You know, I think Damon Harris is their better running back all around, but I think the guy people fear is Bo Scarborough. And if he's you, a if, big sucker. Well, without a doubt. <laughs> and, and if you go back to the game against Clemson, remember how the game turned when he broke oh, his leg? That's right. The fear factor. He, was he had coming, it going downhill. He was coming down. He was coming downhill. Down and you had the feeling that, wait a minute, can this great defense stop this guy? Yep. Then he gets hurt, and it was almost like Clemson got re-energized. 
I think Damian Harris is the better running back, but don't be surprised if we see a heavy dose early of Bo Scarborough. You're going to see a lot of runs, by the way. You're oh. going to see, you're gonna see uh, you're, they're going to run the football a ton. There's not going to be many passes in this ball game from Alabama. Obviously, Venables is still their defensive mm -hmm. coordinator yep. for Clemson, but new offensive coordinator Brian Dable for Alabama. Does that factor in at all? That's a first-time matchup in that way, that Venables isn't prepping again for the same old Bama he has? Well, it was different last year with Sarkeesian. Well, on one week's notice. <laughs> right. I mean, but so how much you had Lane change? the first matchup, Sarkeesian How much can you change one? in one week? Right. Well, right. it doesn't, it's, it's, a, it's a rhythm and a flow thing, and it's right. what people like to do. So it's obviously a different, uh, different uh, matchup, and you have to call things differently. Yeah. I, I think, again, Jalen Hurts running the football. I think you're going to see quarterback design runs. You're going to see option. How do you get at that great defense? Here's the one thing I'll say about Clemson's defensive line, too. Get some first downs. Yep. Make them play a lot of snaps. They're not a deep uh, defensive line. Those mm -hmm. guys are tough. Front four is great. The front four Doesn't is have the same nasty, guy. and you talked about them going to the NFL draft in the top two rounds. Let me see some other guys. Let me wear you out a little bit like you did to me last year and see what happens. Bama's offense has got to control the football. If you remember the game last year, the first 80 plays, Bama only gave up 14 points. The last 19 or 20 plays, Bama gave up 21 points. The defense was on the field too long. So how do you combat that? Bama's got to run the football. And I think at some point they're going to have to play action pass and throw the football to Calvin Ridley. We don't talk about him enough, guys. You talk to McShay, you talk to Kuyper. He's the best receiver in America. Yeah. Unreal. At some point, you got to get him the football. You got to throw it over the top, and you do it with play action. You don't come out five wide because that's not Alabama. You do it with play action. The safety comes up, throw it over the top. And you only got one wide receiver that you're really scared about. That's why you double team him the whole time. That's why you ain't going to hear Ridley's name. You, if I'm Venables, there is no way, shape, or form. I'm Easy to say, hard to do, though. Easy to say, hard to Safety do. Safety over the top. This ain't hard. Not all. You this can't do it all hard. Day. Alabama didn't play in the SEC championship mm -hmm. game they got to rest. this year, so they got to rest for an extra week <laughs> that they're not used to getting no. at all, but had to bite their nails a little bit to Correct. find out if he, yes. they were in this playoff here of one of the four. Uh, then you get all the time to prepare for the game, the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. If that game was, if this game was played championship weekend, I don't think there's any doubt which team we'd all be picking based on momentum and based on health. How much of a factor is it, the chance to get healthy and all the time to prepare? Well, I think it's a huge factor. Nick Saban talked about he lost 40 starts on defense. 37 of them will be back for the college football playoff semifinal game. I think that's huge, especially in a 3-4 defense. Your linebackers are the guys, Mac Wilson, Miller, and those guys. They're going to set the those, tone yep. exactly for that defense, so you want your linebackers there. Minka Fitzpatrick, you take some of the burden off him, because when the linebackers aren't there, Minka has to do more. Not that he can't, mm -hmm. but now you put him back in his comfortable role of just being a playmaker. So I think we're going to see the best Alabama team that we've seen all year since they played in the beginning game against Florida State. Well, now, now you don't have to have Minka rushing the pass. Exactly. Much, which, which puts him in a more advantageous situation. I'm going to give you a name, Payne. Mm. Deron Payne Deron in the middle. Deron Payne mm. brings mm. the pain. And he doesn't get Big tall. guy in the middle of the defensive Number line. Number 94, when you watch him, he will own Clemson's offensive line. He's that good. I mean, he doesn't get talked about enough in the conversation. We talk about what they've lost, and we talk about what Alabama isn't from years past. That dude's as dominant as Jaron Reed. That dude's as dominant as Ashawn Robinson as those guys. I mean, he's been, he's been having a heck of a season. But I think those guys get to get healthy and, and rush the passer. Somebody's got to rush the passer. Now, listen, Kelly Bryant's also not a guy that feels comfortable back there, I think, going through all of his progressions. Um, but you better get some pressure on him. X factor here for Bama. Nick Saban. It's the first time in a long time he can walk in that locker room and say, man, nobody believes in you. They don't think you should have been here. But now you get a chance to go out and prove everybody that you belong. He gets to give the new Rodney speech. And how often does Nick Saban in Alabama get to give that speech? No. They don't never, do it often. Never. Never. I mean, you so got to go back years. Right? Show Booger McFarland video <laughs> talking about Clemson's going to yeah. draw hey, you guys. Show it all. You guys show David think. Pog saying Clemson's the better team. Show oh, Alabama's a better team. Come on. <laughs> It is a unique spot for the Tide, <laughs> but here they are again. It wouldn't be a college football playoff without them. Yeah. The road to the playoff. Bama has landed in New Orleans.